back in the knockout rounds of the Champions League. Only the second time in club history in the group stages against Red Bull Salzburg. 3 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, November 28th. Already secure of one of the top two spots in Group D. Incredible achievement. This is where Newcastle silky striker Alexander Izak came from, where Arsenal captain Marta Erdegaard reignited his career, where that delicious human being David Silva recently called an end to his 19-year career the summer after an ACL injury ruled him out for most of the season. Silva, the impish playmaker, who has a statue at Manchester City thanks to his decade there, just one of my favourite footballers of all time, the way he knew exactly what he was going to do with the ball before it came to his feet could just analyse time and space quicker than any human being I've watched other than Lionel Messi. Oh, with all these recent departures, Rory, tell me this. How are Sociedad somehow even better, arguably, than they've ever been? Well, I think to an extent, you can probably make a case that the exact sale, although it was was deeply disappointing, I think, for Sociedad, at the time because he had kind of blossomed into the star that that you thought he could be when he first came through in Sweden and then went to Borussia Dortmund he he seemed to have found himself at Sociedad and you know obviously the the economics of football are what they are and you know that he's not going to stay there forever but you maybe thought he might do another year or so uh, but then obviously Newcastle come in with an awful lot of money and Sociedad can't say no that money has been reinvested the club is extremely sensibly run it's they've had their the last 20 years have been very sort of varied for Sociedad. There have been financial problems there. There has been there have been brushes with with status losses that I think have have spooked the club. Does it? This is remember historically one of Spain's one of Spain's elite, one of the biggest six or seven teams in the country. You know, in the in the 1980s, it was Sociedad and Athletic Bilbao who who broke that duopoly of of Real Madrid and Barcelona. That for a while in the 1980s. The kind of epicenter of Spanish football was in the Basque country. So Sociedad are a big historic name. And I think they felt as though over the last 20 years, they've lost some of that status a little bit. And then under Al Grasil, who's a, who's a local guy who I think is kind of is, is part of the furniture of the club, really. Very unassuming, very modest, very much kind of part of the collective work that they're doing. They have strengthened extremely sensibly, extremely judiciously, and they've been able to invest money partly because of the Isaac sale. And they've done that by partly by looking for players who are maybe undervalued, who aren't being looked at by teams that probably should know better. And the best example of that is obviously Takafusa Kubo, the Japanese winner who's been a, a who's been a real jolt of excitement, not so much as surprise package because I think people knew what he was capable of, but he hadn't quite made it at Real Madrid. He'd He'd done well out on loan. And at Sociedad, he really seems to have, have blossomed. They've got that relationship with Real Madrid. And then the other source of players, and an and unending one for years and years and years, is the Basque country itself. It's a place where players grow. Yeah, let's talk about this, both footballingly and horticulturally, because this is, this is incredible. This is befuddling. This is a thing of one. The football first came to this region like so many regions, British expats flooding into the ports, kicking their footballs. Just in my head, whenever you... That's the same story as what happened in Argentina. You just think of these these sailors just seeing land and just just genuinely leaping off the boat. And the first thing they do is just kick footballs ashore en masse. That's how I mentally picture it. But that's what they did back in the late 1800s. To this day, hundreds of children play on the beaches oh, that they came into daily and many 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 of them turn out to be quite bloody good province we've already said this still can't get over it has more michelin starred restaurants per square mile than just about anywhere else on earth and similarly guipuzcoa has more footballers per capita than the rest of spain with four clubs in la liga there could be a fifth if ibar get promoted which is wild in a province that has less than 2% of Spain's population. One of those teams, Athletic Bilbao, famously only employs Basque players. And Real Sociedad are not as strict, but 16 of their current first team at La Real came through the youth system at Zubayeta. That's also where coach... Emmanuel Alguacil came from first as a deeply mediocre fullback, then as a youth team director, 
and he's a fascinating character really one of the most reluctant head coaches in football pulled into the gig several times now a bit like James Brown being crowned live on stage whenever other managers get fired he admits that the responsibility gets to him he has to take sleeping pills to help with the stress the sleepless nights Barcelona reportedly considered hiring him before they opted for Xavi but it's unclear if he'd willingly leave a team he's essentially raised since they were kids all of that talent in the Bass region, Rory. I mean, there's enough to power four teams in La Liga. The entire Athletic Bilbao roster again. And this Real Sociedad team are in the knockout rounds of the Champions League. Just what is in the water of La Concha Beach? Well, I would say there's there's probably two things, but the ultimate answer is I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, it, it may just be one of those kind of cultural, geographic, historical things that becomes so self-fulfilling so cyclical that it 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 kind of just becomes nature if that makes sense so the ba- the Basque country was a relative early adopter of football and if you look at spanish football in the in the 1920s and 30s say which was when it was first really becoming as big a thing as it was in england the Basque clubs were were attracting high level coaches they were getting foreign foreign coaches coaches largely from england to come and work with their players there was a team in irun which is it runs a little town on the border and they they now are no very Real Run is very much not a thing anymore. It's not a team that you would have heard of. But they hired a guy called Steve Bloomer, who was kind of the the nineteen twenties David Beckham, to be their coach. And that's unthinkable now that, you know, that a tiny team from Iran, a border post between Spain and France, would be able to, to attract this big name player to come and come and coach them. But but Iran did and Bloomer made an impact and Iran I think won various kind of local cups or national they they, com- they competed nationally but they were they were something of a force so i think there was an element of there's an element of history in it that that football in the basque country the basque country's got all the kind of right ingredients to play a british style of football you know it's it rains a lot and it's windy and i think that's why the game kind of caught light there quite quickly and the other thing is that is the competition that 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 has led to that across the Basque the Basque provinces, there are there are a multitude of clubs. There's there's loads of kind of youth teams. There's a team in every tiny village. There's a team in every town. There's lots of teams in every town, and they often have. Certainly, this is the case in Navarra, which is where Osasuna are based, which is is not Basque but is Basque adjacent. <laughs> they have a kind of they have a link into the into the professional team. So there's a there's a really ready pathway, and because the Basque teams are looking for players. Other teams go to the Basque country and look for players because they know that there that those pathways exist. That the you know the Athletic and, and Real Sociedad and Alaves and the others are looking for players in that area. And I think it creates this kind of sense of opportunity. There's a historic connection. There's a lot of competition, which tends to raise the standards that the players are that the players are experiencing. That you know they're getting a taste of very competitive football very early on. You'll see quite often that that teams from outside the Basque country in Spain will loan young players out to Basque teams and it's because they know that in the Basque country they play a very competitive style of football and anyone who's watched Real Sociedad in the Champions League this season will know that they are playing attractive, expansive, attacking, very modern football. They're not a kind of British style, up and under, up and at them sort of team. But I think Basque football in general historically has been very physical, very competitive, quite combative. You know, it, the fields aren't as good, the stadiums are quite intimidating, quite hostile. It's a really kind of, what's the word, a really distinct taste of football for young players. And that obviously helps players from outside the Basque region develop. But if you've come through that inside the Basque region, you probably have quite a good chance of having all of the psychological all the mental traits that you need to be a footballer i think what that mixture of history and geography and competition and culture has has made is a place that is perfect for developing footballers and that enables athletic to have a squad that's just got bastards in it it enables sociedad for a long time to have a dual policy of you are either bast or you were foreign sociedad wouldn't play spanish players they would they had to be born in the Basque country or imported from abroad it's enough to sustain all of those teams not just at the professional level, but all of the amateur ones, all of the semi-pro ones as well. You have this place where football is just in the ground, and it has always been that way. And I guess there's an element of speculation here. 
But I think if you're Basque, you probably think you've got a decent chance of being a footballer because you know that you've got Bilbao, you've got Sociedad, you've got Osasuna, you've got Alaves. They're all looking for Basque players. So it feels realistic to become a footballer. And that, I think, is probably quite an important oh, part Spanish by birth, Basque by the grace of God. But it's not just the players. The Basque region grows high-level elite coaches, again, as if on trees. Um, of course, there's not room for all of them at La Real. Or some of them have had to find employment at far-flung places across the continent, even across the channel. Premier League, see nearly half a dozen of them in the past year or two. I mean... Basque managers are to the Premier League currently what Michelin-starred restaurants are to San Sebastian. Mikel Arteta at Arsenal grew up playing barefoot on the sand on the beach in San Sebastian. And Doni Iraola now at Bournemouth, doing much better now than he was at the start of the season. That charismatic helmet head. Oh, smiling wonder. Unai Emery with Aston Villa. Former Spain boss Julen Lopetegui was in charge of Wolves until he wasn't. Javi Gracia, he's been around Watford, Leeds. Um, then there's, of course, Xavi Alonso, who deserves his own show and will soon get one. Currently topping the Bundesliga with Bayer Leverkusen in the most fascinating way. And you ask Mikel Arteta why so many great coaches come from the Basque region. His answer is, quote, the food. We have the best food in the world. The best restaurants per square meter. It's the most beautiful city. Good one, Mikel. That really helps us understand it. In fact, I understand your region about as well as I do understand why you're not playing Aaron Ramsdale. Uh, I'm sure there's a reason you just didn't give it to us. But two questions here, really. What are Bass coaches like as a whole? Why are so many of them from such a small province, Rory? You know, is it just as simple that the great Dave Moyes coached there in 2014-15? Um Maybe it's, is it all just his coaching tree? I think a lot of it is probably down to David Moyes. <laughs> uh, the, I think there is an element of Basques being good travellers, which sounds a bit stupid, but the, but the Basque, a lot of the original wealth centuries had always to do with fishing, and Basques bestrode the waves. They, they went out and explored the world, and I think that's a crucial thing for a manager, particularly to leave Spain, you have to have a kind of willingness to, to travel, to explore. And I think that, that is part of, of the Basque character. It sounds like a stupid thing to say. We're not really meant to generalise about people, but I think it's probably true of Basques. I think that they grow up in a in a very competitive environment. That's really important. I think they're, they're exposed to two traditions that are quite useful. One is the Spanish idea of retaining possession, of technical perfection, of, of all the things we associate with Spanish football. And the other thing is the, the, the sort of not shameful secret really but the kind of the other side of Basque football which is much more industrial much more industrious much more kind of agricultural perhaps we used to, as we, we maybe would have said a few years ago Rog Basque football is a little bit more gritty than Span- than than we maybe think of Spanish football with all, all of its finery and those two those two things I think combine to make Basques quite adaptable to different footballing cultures quite com- Basque managers people who've come through Basque football are quite com- naturally competitive. They're used to thriving in, in a really competitive environment. And I, w- I spent a little bit of time with Xavi Alonso recently, as we will discuss at a later date. And someone asked him a question and said, You've, um, you know, people say in Germany, where he's obviously coaching by a labor so and so, so impressively, you know, people say that you seem quite German. And he kind of laughed and he went, no, 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 no I'm 100% Basque. I'm pure Basque. And it was that laugh of someone who thinks, okay, look, this is a this is a minor point. This is just a minor correction. It's all good fun. But also I'm really very bast. Do not say I'm anything but bast. And I think that that there maybe is a bit of truth in that, that that the Basque country is different to the rest of Spain. It's a different character, it's a different mindset. It's maybe a little bit has a little bit more in common, or that there are things that you can find in common in other countries that make it easier for you to adapt to working there. Whereas if you're from Andalusia, say, maybe it's a little bit harder. So I think those two things maybe explain why Basque coaches have done so well, both in Spain and and elsewhere. It's not to do with some special school inspired by David Moyes or even by John Toshak, Raj, who coached Sociedad in the 1980s. The Liverpool legend. I think, I think it's more to do with the, the footballing heritage, to quote Jose Mourinho, not Basque, uh, and that willingness to travel. 